Business is nothing but war. And anybody that's telling you otherwise is just not operating at the right level. When you go into entrepreneurship, when you go into business, when you're trying to elevate yourself, you need to fundamentally understand that there are other people that want what you have. There are other people that want what you want. Anytime you're trying to grow your business, you're trying to grow your lifestyle, there is going to be a force that pushes back at you. And maybe this force is not so apparent at the lower levels, but when you get really to the upper echelons of life, which I'm not even at, I'm just starting to see these upper echelons. You will see people try to hurt you, betray you, take from you, and really just damage you. And it's because fundamentally they want what you want. And I'm not here to say that resources are finite. I think that resources are really infinite. I think that there's a lot of good things out there in the world. But you have to understand that when you want to get something, when you want to get that car, when you want to get that house, somebody else wants it. And it's you versus them. And you need to outcompete them. That is why on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're in business, if you're in entrepreneurship, you need to maintain a optimistic, a competitive, and a very aggressive mindset. And you almost have to self-delude to a degree. You almost have to think that you are the best and really act that way to be the best. On a day-to-day -day basis, I wake up and I do what a CEO should do. Even if I'm not feeling like it, even if I'm feeling a little sad, even though I'm feeling a little groggy, maybe I'm feeling a little lazy, I still do what a CEO should do. And one of the biggest mind hacks I can give you is that I just pretend there's a camera crew on me. And a lot of my life is having a camera crew on me. A lot of my life is being filmed. You know, I, I'm, I'm with marketing teams a lot. I'm, I'm being filmed for my podcast a lot. I'm being filmed on podcasts a lot. But I have to believe that when I wake up in the morning, when I'm taking a shower, when I'm taking a shit, when I'm doing everything that I'm doing, when I'm having sex, when I'm making love to the girl that I love, I have to believe that there is a crew on me. And it sounds crazy. It sounds delusional. But this is how you really elevate your mindset. You can't become great unless you really understand that you need to seize that greatness within you. You have to visualize it first. The first part of it is visualization. The second part of it is accepting that reality that you are visualizing in. So if you want to be the best golfer in the world, you have to really imagine yourself first and foremost in a delusional way that you are the best golfer in the world. Then you have to say, what does the best golfer in the world do on a day-to-day -day basis? Then you have to go and enact those actions. And a better way to supplement that and to really concrete that is to pretend that there's a media team on you at all times because human beings are very social creatures and we don't like to disappoint. We don't like to upset those that believe in us. We don't like to look bad in front of people. We really don't. We like to be on our best behavior. And you're a lot more likely to be a little bit more conscious of your actions and be a little bit more forced to do something if you believe delusionally that people are watching you. And so I believe that there's a media team on me at all times, and I believe that there's a million people watching me on whatever I do. And yes, I'm going to make mistakes. Yes, I'm going to be human. I'm going to fall here and there. I'm not saying I'm perfect in any way, but this is the mindset that you need to operate at. You need to believe this because people do a lot of dumb things by themselves. I'll tell you one thing, porn. Porn is a dumb thing that people do by themselves. They close the door, they lock it, they get under their covers, and it's a little escape from reality. It's a dopamine hit from reality. It's literally a drug, that's what it is. People do drugs by themselves because they need to get that dopamine hit. But if you had a media team on you, and you really believe that on a day-to-day -day basis, you would not be jerking off. I am telling you, you would not be jerking off. You'd be doing everything the best way you possibly could be doing and you would keep your posture upright and you would do things in the most perfect manner possible. You would wash your hands every time you go to the bathroom. You would put everything back when you used it. You would not create such a mess. You would close the door and turn off the light switch and do what you need to do because you know that people are going to be watching and you want to look your best. You want to look perfect, but you can't be perfect, but you will try to. And the the attempt to be perfect is what's going to get you closer to perfection. And that is what's going to keep you competitive. And that's what's going to allow you to get that house, get that car, get the girl, get, get whatever you want to get in life. So when people ask me about how can I grow, how can I become a better person, how can I really dominate in the world, you need to maintain a competitive mindset. Think of yourself almost like a computer. And you need to really install the right software on a day-to-day -day basis that will allow you to stay in that competitive mindset. You need to stay aggressive. You need to stay dominant. But you also have to self-reflect. You also have to look at your emotions. Emotions are just biological feedback. And you have to make sure that you're tailoring you know, and, and really being 
aware of them. Now, let me let me flip here, right? It's not just about being macho man all the time. There are days where I feel depressed. There are days where I wake up and, and genuinely, I just like am, am so sad. I don't know why, but sometimes I wake up like that. And I have to address it and I have to journal. I have to write down things like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling incomplete? And some of you might be like, oh my God, this is a red flag, alarm, you know? No, we are not meant to be happy 24 seven. We are not meant to be joyful and positive all the time. Everything in life only exists for a certain period of time. Even happiness, even joy, even your physical you and your physical body, everything goes away. And so I think that you need to be aware of these emotions. If I'm overly happy, if I'm very, very excited and I'm having too much fun, even then I'm like, whoa, I gotta slow down. I gotta stop a little bit. Too much fun is too bad. Too much sadness is too bad. Too much anger is too bad. Everything in, in an excess can be very detrimental for you. So if I'm feeling very overly sad, it's not good for me to just bury that and shove it down and just act like it doesn't exist. I have to really address those feelings and say, hey, okay, I'm feeling a, a little, little too much sad, a little too sad today, a little depressed today, if you will, and address those feelings, address that temporary emotion to where I can start to move it and start to manipulate it in a certain way. If I'm feeling too happy, I also have to kind of back off a bit. I have to back off a bit. I have to chill out a bit. I remember I uh, closed a big deal for our business and I made a lot of money very quickly, right? Very quickly. And I got this huge dopamine spike from it. I had to catch myself. I had to pull over because uh, I did it in the car actually. And uh, I had to pull over. I'm like, this is not healthy. Me feeling so, so, so happy is not healthy. It is not. I got to get back to a state of emotional zero. First and foremost, I rationalized it and said, listen, people make this money every single day. This was a lot of money that I made in, in a few minutes, but people make this every single day in a few minutes. It's regular to them. So chill out. You know, you're acting like this is the best thing in the entire world. It is the best thing for you right now. It's amazing, but you got to elevate your mindset. You've got to get better. See, some people would be very happy making what I make in a week and I'm not trying to be egotistical here. I'm not trying to brag. I do very well for myself. And some people would be very happy just making that amount of money. But I am not overjoyed every single week when I make that amount of money. Now, if I'm making triple or double that, I will get a little bit of a dopamine spike. But that mindset is also very limiting, right? It's important to be grateful for what you have. It's very important for you to be very, very appreciative for what you have. Because if you don't appreciate it, if you're not grateful for it, then I really believe the universe will take it away from you. But at the same time, you have to always strive for more. You have to always do better. A bodybuilder, you know, is not happy with his physique. But for me to get his physique, for example, if I was to have perfectly shredded um, body like a lot of professional bodybuilders, I would be very happy if I could just snap my fingers and wake up like that. But that mindset is uncompetitive when you're trying to be the best at what you do. You're always trying to be better. You can appreciate it and you can be grateful for it. And I was grateful and appreciative for the money that I made. I had to catch myself. I had to like hold myself back. And then I'd realize like, listen, I, I should be accepting this as the norm. I should be doing this every single day. I should not be over here jumping for joy like this never happens. I should expect this to happen. And then I get back in a state of visualization. If I'm someone that makes this amount of money every single day in this 10 minutes of time, what are the things that I'm doing? Because I truly believe now that I've, I've tasted it, that I can get this on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I get back into that mindset where I pretend that I have a media crew on me. I pretend that people are watching me. I try to do the best thing that I possibly can. If I made this amount of money, I, I don't want to be like jumping for joy like, and giggling like a little girl. I want to be like, all right, yeah, good. Keep, keep moving. Stay focused. What's next? What's the next problem I got to solve? You got to stay competitive. Many people don't stay competitive, and that's why they fail in business. They adopt certain mindsets that, oh, this is hard. Oh, this is difficult. Of course it's going to be hard. Of course it's going to be difficult. Anytime you try to gain massive success, you're going to be met with a lot of failure. It's in and out. Everything in life is 50-50. You breathe in, you breathe out. The blood rushes in your heart, the blood goes out. You deposit money, and then you take money out to grow your business. And when you win success, nobody's ever taught that you're going to fail just as much. You're going to fail just as much as you succeed. That's just how it is. I have failed so many times in so many different ways. And some people have seen that side of me. Some people have seen me failing at things over and over and over again. And some people have seen the side where I just crank home runs out left and right. 
And honestly, because I've cranked a few home runs out, people remember you for the home runs a lot more for the failures. I promise you that's just how it is. Most people don't realize that most millionaires and most business owners and most people that are very successful have failed many, many times. But you remember those successful home runs because they're a, a testament to what they're doing today. They're, they're there today. My businesses are here today. My money that I'm making is here today. My penthouse is here today. My cars are here today. But the failures are still there. They, they exist in the mind and they exist in the memories and they exist in the lessons that I've learned. So everything is 50-50. You're gonna have to fail if you wanna become successful. And so the way that you handle failure is very important. You have to just realize that, hey, it's temporary and I'm gonna move on. And the way that you handle success is also the same exact way. It's temporary. That success is temporary. And as long as you maintain that neutral point where you're always just focused and always doing things, you are going to really win in the long, in the, in the grand scheme of life. And that the consistent wins that you stack up, this is where it really gets good. You have a, a, a drip of joy. You have a drip of accomplishment. Even if I lost everything today, I will still always remember how much I did, how many people I helped. I was going through my messages yesterday and there's so many people that reached out to me like, thank you so much for what you do. Thank you so much for your content. You saved my life. You really helped me. And I'm so grateful for these messages. I'm so grateful for people telling me these things. I really am because it, it means the world to me. It really does. When people message me these things on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I, I really, it warms my heart. I do it for you guys more than anything. So when you reach out to me, understand that that's the biggest gift you could ever give me. That's the biggest gift you could give me, letting me know how I helped you. And that's what motivates me to keep going. And even if I lose everything tomorrow, even if I get thrown in, in, in jail, if I lose my leg, if, I, if something happens to me, God forbid, I will always remember how many people I helped. So you have to be grateful and appreciative of the things that you've done. You have to maintain a competitive mindset. You have to always be striving for better and understand that when you get into business, when you get into entrepreneurship, when you try to do something big, you're going to be met with a lot of resistance, no matter what it is. Even if you're trying to do something that's good, when you, when you do a lot of good, you're going to be met with a lot of evil. The evil is going to attack you in, in theory in the, in the world. If you're trying to help people like I am, right, people will send me death threats. People will say negative things about me. People will comment on my physical appearance and say this, that, and the third, even though I'm trying to spread positivity and love because some people just have hate in their hearts and you can't look at them as, as really just people that need to be eradicated. You have to look at them as people that you have to help. Those people need me the most. They just don't know it. And they're on my videos and they're watching my things and they're commenting to me because it's almost like a cry for help. That's the way I look at it. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope that, you know, you appreciate the time that you spent with me here today because I do for sure. You could have been anywhere else in the world and you decided to spend it with me. If you found that this was helpful, definitely share it with somebody that you think that could benefit from this. If you ever want to connect with me, you can message me on Instagram. Um, you can connect with me on any social media. Shout out to K&D for allowing me to use this beautiful penthouse to film this in. Big shout out to them. And uh, thank you for your time, guys. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.